Hello and welcome to Pitt Street Research. Today we're joined by Jim Hayden, the president of Blue Glass. Welcome. Thank you. In a nutshell, Jim, can you tell us who is Blue Glass? What do you guys do? Uh, Blue Glass is uh, Australia's only uh, vertically integrated semiconductor manufacturing company. We're a GAN laser organization and we use our proprietary um, growth technology to propel us forward in the uh, GAN laser space. So what we do is we, uh, we grow and then process semiconductor wafers, mm -hmm. and turning them into lasers that can be used in multiple industries, uh, industrial processing, microelectronics, uh, medical, biomedical sensing, quantum computing, those types of applications. Right. And a couple of years ago, the company pivoted towards laser diodes. Why, why laser diodes, not say LEDs or, or some, some other sort of related product? Yeah, so we did this pivot uh, and it basically comes down to uh, trying to match what our talents are and um, what capabilities we have with where we think the um, best play for us in the market is. And we believe with the uh, capacity we have in our silver water facility that we could get the best um, return on that investment by using lasers rather than LEDs. When you look at a LED, um, the, the wafer that you get, how much you could turn that into LED cells is not nearly as much. It could be 100, 100 times that with right. laser diodes. So the average selling price is much better. Right. And that's why we moved in that direction. Uh, we, we believe that our technology is great, but um, the licensing play uh, didn't seem to be as attractive as the laser dial play as well. Right. Okay. Um, not too long ago, you purchased a, a manufacturing facility in Fremont in California in the U.S. Um, that's a big game changer for the company, right? As in, in, on a number of levels. Can you talk us through why that is? Yeah, so uh, there, there are many levels that we're already reaping the benefits of. But the first one is... Uh, it gives us the technology and the capacity. It was a working fab. Mm -hmm. And we've been working with contract manufacturers to do development. And contract manufacturers are much better at doing the same thing the same way all the time. When we're doing development, we have our fab now that comes with this equipment. It was, um, it was built for doing semiconductor processing. All we had to do is convert it from one type of semiconductor to another. So the first advantage is getting the capability to do what we have and having it in-house, our control of it. The next thing is, is it was an operating fab and it had talented people. And the talent pool is key uh, to getting done what we need to do. And so having those people in place and then just bringing in a new management team uh, also afforded us the opportunity to start doing development right away. And we have been, for instance, looking for a laser scientist for quite some years uh, since we decided to do this pivot. And um, what we found is in the fab in Silicon Valley opened up a whole new resource to us. Right. Uh, my, I have a colleague and friend at the uh, University of Santa Barbara, and he called me up, was talking about, hey, you got this great new facility, how are things going? And just having that connection and knowing that we had a place there, he's like, hey, I got a grad student coming. Right. Right. He's going he's gonna to get his PhD few months he was an engineer before that so he comes with experience as well industrial experience and uh, we were able to hire him right and so that's a, another advantage that we have so a talent pool that existed and then reaching another talent pool uh, and then going into the resources at UC Santa Barbara and other local colleges in California it's right. a, a great thing but then coming back to having the equipment and the process capabilities, and then talking a little bit about how it was at the CMs. The CMs are good at doing the mm -hmm. same thing all the time. Well, this team is used to doing iterations. Right. And they're used to saying, hey, let's try this or let's try that, because they've had to do development of lasers. They weren't our right. type of lasers, but they were lasers, yeah, okay. right? And so they already have that experience. And we've started uh, in the middle of July, we were fully permitted, and we're able to start using that facility to make lasers. And we started by doing short loop iterations. And within six weeks, we started our first full processing of laser right. diodes. All right. So that's a, that agility yeah. uh, is, is what it brings to us. 
and we have the ability now to get really quick feedback because we have a lot more metrics inline metrics is what we call them mm -hmm. so you don't have to make a full laser you could do measurements on the wafers and determine uh, what do you do next on your next one to make it better so when right. you're in development that that uh, feedback loop is really important right and in terms of ramping up sales can you tell us a little bit about how fast that might go uh, and, and and then to, from that at what point you could potentially start to switch off contract manufacturing because that will do wonders for your margins over time oh absolutely it will uh, so let's see the that's a uh, looking at the a little bit how fast we could ramp up or what does it bring to us. The first thing we, we did an analysis of was how does it match what we already have here in Silverwater? And we looked at the capacity that we had at our contract manufacturers because they also have other customers. Yep. And so what they thought they could allot to us, well, this fab brought about a factor of 4x of that. And, you know, it's uniquely sized that it about matches the capacity that we have right now in Silverwater. Right. Uh, there's probably room to growth in both places, but mm -hmm. right now they seem to be pretty well matched, and it's about a factor of four what we thought we had before. Right. Uh, and so that is a, uh, I guess maybe the first part of your question. Second, how fast could we ramp? Well, if things go well, and so far they look like they're going well, um, we will be able to start uh, processing wafers at a much uh, more frequent capacity or uh, rate than we were able to before. Right. And so we've started uh, our second lot of full laser devices already and already planning our third lot. So we're moving more quickly. And you also asked then when would we transition away from the CMs to improve our margin? Mm -hmm. And the plan is to transition out of the CMs, uh, not be depending on them at all for production within this fiscal year. So by the middle of next calendar year. Okay, that's pretty like to, quick. Yeah. It is pretty quick. And the the team in California is chomping at the bit to move even faster than right, that. Okay. But, uh, but that's our plan right now is right. by the end of the fiscal year. And in terms of capacity, so in terms of talking dollars, what's sort of the, the maximum dollar amount once you are fully rammed? What, what can the facility do basically? Well, we think that uh, looking at sort of the average selling price we might get with the number of wafers we could do, which we think it'll be about 10,000 wafers per year, we think we could turn that into about $160 million. Right. Okay. Uh, we don't know how long it'll take to get to $160 million a year in revenue, but uh, that's where we think we could do with the investments right. we've done. We have most of the equipment in place. We may need a, a few specialty pieces along the way. Right. But that's... So you got some, some runway then. So yeah, we have some yeah. runway. <laughs> yes, right. we do. Um, so there's a couple of players in the industry already, obviously, in the laser diode space, that are established, they've got revenues. Um, so you, basically, you, you guys are the new kid on the block to some extent. Yes. How do you plan to compete with, with these players? What's well, interesting, uh, competing with and against, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky thing, right? Because uh, I, I sometimes think about, you hear about the 600 or 800 pound gorilla. Yeah. And I like to think in visuals. So if you were going to be competing with a gorilla, what would you do? Uh, to stay alive, you might want to stay away from the gorilla. Right? <laughs> that, that would help you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so what, we, what we'd like to do is we, we want to find niches uh, where we can play where um, the gorilla is not stomping around. And there's a lot of opportunity there because uh, we have a little different philosophy that we're putting forward. We're going to be a, a low to medium volume uh, with a higher mix. And so what our the large competitors are doing is they're going um, low mix high volume mm -hmm. and so those two different business plans don't necessarily mix so we don't have right. to go fight them for every last cent and you know dry you'll know, get into uh, price wars with them we can provide different form factors different wavelengths and different specifications to products that are easier for our customers to use and when they're easier to use they don't have to spend as much money on their side of the product development so they're willing to pay right. us more right. so we're going for the lower volume higher asp yeah okay and uh, so we did a big report on on blue glass uh, a little while ago yes um, thank you for that yeah no worries uh, i thought it's, it's i think it's really interesting this space because if you look at the individual sort of target markets there's a lot of growth i think on average it's something like 23 percent average growth through 2025 or something so that's a very interesting um, market to to uh, to target, but even within those uh, individual sort of verticals, there must be pockets of m even higher growth than that. Uh, what what would be the most interesting ones from where you're sitting at the moment? 
But it, there's a combination of growth and uh, capability and then serviceability, right? And who is servicing it. So we uh, are looking at a strategy where we have a certain performance. We know the customers that are feeling underserved by the big guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so the, I think the faster growth for us will be going into the underserved markets that are not a lot of competition. And so we can grow faster. And the GAN industry is actually growing faster for two reasons. Um, one, it is consuming um, existing markets that are being served by IR um, inf infrared lasers. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason it's doing that is we have some very nice properties of our lasers so we can consume that market by providing better processes for the customers, usually at less power and less um, cost overall because right. of less power. The second is applications are being enabled by the visible and sometimes UV and um, visible wavelengths. Right. And so those are new applications that weren't served before. And there's like quantum computing type of things. They have shown feasibility, uh, but they do it through what's called a solid state um, uh, external pumping, mm -hmm. uh, cavity, laser. It's a complicated device where you have a laser, a crystal, and so forth. And uh, they double it to get the wavelength. And it's just too big to be in a little, right. uh, really small, compact thing that you might need for AR, VR, or for autonomous vehicles and right. so forth. So they've shown feasibility with different kind of devices, but our devices will enable that because they're going to be semiconductor, solid state, and small. Okay. Um, just turning the attention to you for a second, you joined the company a little while ago. Um, you have a very impressive resume. Um, where do you think your past experience in this industry fits best with, with Blue Glass, where it is now as a company? Well, the, my past experience ranges uh, from you know research when I was in grad school and um, just after grad school to device development, um, laser design. Mm -hmm. uh, then I moved into operations, operations management, where I uh, was able to manage the groups and help define strategies for companies and integrate work work out deals with different partners and so forth. So the breadth of that career has all been in lasers. Mm -hmm. And so I think what it does is it positions me because I've been part of small companies and large companies now, companies that grew from small to large, yeah. like SDL or Spectra Dial Labs, as it was once was called. And so that kind of experience, I could relate to our scientists, our engineers, to the you know CFO and talk, to the board, yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, and also to investors. You yeah. know, so I've I've dealt with that that breadth, uh, and so I think I bring some of that to the table. And I I, I like, I like lasers. Yeah. I like what I what I do. Yeah, you, so have, to, then, yeah. you have to like it, right? So you have to like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Um, well, last question. Um, so you've got your near term challenges, uh, obviously, in ramping up the facility or facilities, I should say. Um, longer term, say three to five years, what are the company's sort of longer term aspirations in this space? I, I think I touched on that a little bit, but I could elaborate. So we talked about uh, trying to make products that are easier to use for our customers. So the long term will be to continue to leverage our internal expertise. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to move in the direction of taking that expertise and making products that are usable to our lasers that I mean, to our customers and lasers that are easily integrated into their components without a lot of cost at their end, so they're right. willing to pay us more for it. Mm -hmm. And so that's a big part of our uh, our strategy. And in doing that, we're going to leverage our, uh, our existing IP. We have 93 patents. Um, we're going to we're going to continue to do that. We're going to continue to invest. Uh, we talked about um, the UCSB. Uh, there's there's UCSB and other partners that are going to come in and help us, um, and we're going to work with them to collaborate to make even better devices. Right. Basically, what we can do best internally, we will do, and then we'll mm -hmm. find the expertise outside of the company when we need to as well. All right. Excellent. Jim Hayden, thank you very much for your time. All right. Thank you.